like to call to order our Tuesday, February 15th, 2022 uh, board discussion meeting. We'll begin with our Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. This meeting is a meeting of the school board in public for the purpose of conducting school corporation business and is not considered a public community meeting. There will be time for public participation as indicated on the agenda. Uh, this meeting is fully accessible. Our meeting is also being live streamed. So hello to anyone out there who is watching. Uh, also, all board members were provided background information to the items on the agenda in preparation for tonight's meeting. Uh, we do have the public comment forms up here near Attorney Elwood. If anyone would like to address the board at the appropriate time, please fill out one of those forms and return it to the board table, and we will bring you up at that point in the meeting. Uh, so we begin our meeting tonight uh, with our good news report. Do we have a video, or is, I don't see Melissa here. We no? do have okay, a video. Great, yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Wrigley Barcelli, and this is the good news at Portage. Our Portage music students performed in the ISMA Solo and Ensemble competition last weekend and once again had the Midas touch. Over 20 solos and four ensemble performances earned a gold rating and qualified for the upcoming state competition. Great job to our music students. Portage High School hosted its annual Outstanding Young Man competition recently. Senior Preet Singh took the first runner-up spot and your class of 2022 Outstanding Young Man is Bryce Hufford. Both Bryce and Pre earned scholarships that can be used as they pursue their college careers next year. Congratulations to our winner and all of the participants. Congratulations to senior Alex Franco, who was offered a full tuition scholarship to Alfred University. This scholarship covers all academic costs and gives him a promised pathway to Syracuse Law or Buffalo Law in New York. Way to go, Alex. Congratulations to Portage High School senior Estony Rivera on receiving a Silver Key Award in the Scholastic Arts and Writing Competition. Her artwork, titled Angel, is a mural that is located in the art department at PHS. A replica of her work will be on display from February 5th to March 12th in the Warner and Community Galleries at South Bend Museum of Art. Congratulations, Estony! The engineering and technology education classrooms at Portage High School will be receiving a makeover thanks to generous grants from the City of Portage Redevelopment Commission. Their Education Challenge Grant provided Portage High School with $100,000 to outfit the Manufacturing Lab, Construction Lab, and STEM Multi-Lab. We can't wait to see our students using their new labs and equipment. Thank you for listening and remember we are Portage Proud. young man very cool um, also I didn't mention and I should uh, trustee Finley is not with us this evening she was uh, downstate Indianapolis for the ISBA's legislative day uh, out visiting with uh, our state reps and senators and uh, hopefully um, protesting a couple of bills that they're trying to pass down there so I'm, I'm sure she will give us a good report back at our next board meeting so uh, uh, we just want to publicly thank her for taking that time to be down there today Okay, next we have our uh, NWEA data update and our ESSER funding update. Dr. Alice. So, um, something exciting to share with you today, the ESSER funding update. Um, if you recall, we did do this update in December and I had assured you we would do it again in February and we also plan to do this again in January, I'm sorry, June. Um, we have continued to archive these on the district's website and so this report will also be going on the website so that we're transparent in how the spending to date has uh, accumulated, what dollars we still have remaining, and also what upcoming things we anticipate working toward with the dollars. So um, as I had shared with you in December, the allocation from ESSER 1, um, this is pretty much spent down at this point, and the balance for the non-public schools, uh, our, their share of that is $76. So at this point in time, we've used that for um, PPE, plexiglass barriers and such. Um, summer school remediation instructors for 
in school and after school technology, which was our iPad replacement, and again, that equitable sharing with non-public schools, which totaled $20,000 to the schools there listed, and again, there's a $76 balance. The spend down date was, is 9.30 of 2022, so we're gonna be just great there. For ESSER two, this was um, approximately $5 million. At this point in time, we have 2.9 remaining. Um, we have used this to upgrade HVAC, cleaning supplies, carpet replacement will also be involved in this. For achievement, remediation teachers, full-time substitute teachers, also summer literacy and ready, set kindergarten. Um, for technology, 1.4 million elementary iPads, as you know, classroom presentation technology, our network fiber replacement and device security system. Um, there is no share requirement for the non-public equitable services in this, and again, that balance is there provided for you. This has to be spent down by 2023, September 30th. And our ESSER three, this allocation was 11.3 million. Um, to date, we have 9.6, a little over that, and this has to be spent down by September of 24. Um, again, HVAC upgrades, Challenge Ed course, our social emotional learning services, um, cleaning supplies, also for achievement, additional teachers, some class size reduction with these funds, remediation teachers, our interventionists, summer school, kindergarten, early start teachers, and curriculum development and training. Um, technology, again, our device replacement and our robotic supplies. There is no sharing requirement with the non-pubs here. And um, as you see there, this is where one point, nearly 1.6 million has been utilized for COVID response stipends to eligible employees. So those who are, were eligible uh, the first round, the $1,200 stipend, and then the recent stipend that the board uh, asked to proceed with and you voted on, which was the $500. And, and they have started to roll in um, with the expectation of signing off and verifying those. I just gave you the same plan documents as before. Um, would you mind, Matt, clicking on student achievement? This is sharing with you um, the various things that are either not yet started or ongoing or are complete. Um, our K-5 to tech upgrades for those device devices additional replacements for grade nine. Um, we are, and that's tentative grade nine, but one of the things we've heard feedback is that by the time our students are getting to high school, the devices are aging in such a way that we need to add in a second rotation of devices. So we're looking at, um, again, I don't know for certain it's gonna be ninth grade, but it's going to be a high school um, rollout of new devices. So we're identifying which grade level that's going to be. Also those interventionists, that's ongoing. Um, as I shared, class size reduction. Uh, we could just scroll down a little bit there. Our remediation teachers, also high reliability schools, our coaches, um, Dr. Stevens and the principals are doing a great job alongside their site-based team teacher leaders as they are currently in the process of becoming certified with level one, safe and collaborative. And then next year they will work through the instructional component. Under collaboration and acceptance, some things that are ongoing um, there are in green. So again, our, our data digs and different meetings after school that take place, the stipends for those, our instructional coaches for the fall of 2022, our permanent substitutes. We are also um, in the process of updating the MacBook Airs for our teachers with us for $3. good there in that one last chart for facilities we are not yet started have not yet started um, the ventilation upgrades at PHS the carpet replacement in the elementary PE rooms and district classrooms um, the PE is ongoing tech infrastructure updates the t fiber tester and outside fiber those are both ongoing so these are just some upcoming things and some situations that are ongoing or are in the process and will be started with our facility study and our um, collaboration with Alliance and Skillman. Um, of course, this is heavily involving 
not only finance, but Linda Williams with grants, um, Dr. Stevens, uh, and of course, Mile Mavrovich, who oversees our buildings and grounds. So. Go to the, oh, I can go to the next one. Okay. Any questions before I move along? These are just our, our research and our documents that we re refer to regularly on why we're spending dollars how we are. And, My question would be uh, the programs uh, such as after school uh, remediation, how sustainable are they when these funds are no longer given to us or the deadline? So the great news is we have always historically had a, a very robust after school remediation program for our students. And so all we've done at this point in time is defrayed the costs of that with ESSER dollars, so it is something that will be sustainable long over time. Um, and as we've been working through this, Nick has been very conscientious in making certain that we're aware that whatever we are putting in place, that if we want those to be sustained after ESSER dollars, we're building that kind of like forecasting into those future budgets in 23 and in 24, so that we're making certain that we can sustain those very things. So, but remediation in particular, we've just been able to not spend our traditional dollars and are using ESSER dollars. So I, I, might, I have a question, So, I, and I know you guys are working on it, you're talking about it, and it relates to, you know, with our school t time change and some of the challenges for the yeah. elementary after school. Can ESSER dollars be used to help with some after school program um, that'll help those parents who are worried about their kids coming home so early? Yes, after school, after school programs are covered in um, the opportunity to utilize ESSER dollars. I'd have to work with our team to identify exactly to what extent, but I will tell you that we're working in collaboration with um, the local organizations and we will be putting out a survey here very soon about a latchkey program and which parents, you know, grade levels, what time they would need it to, all of that, and we will be able to utilize specifically for supplies so that we can run some of those programs um, and then working with other personnel in organizations such as the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club, so that we can make certain to defray as much cost as possible to families. Any other questions about the ESSER update? Okay. Um, this is a very brief but extremely proud moment for all of us as a district um, you'll see in the audience, several of our principals are here this evening, um, and I am just really excited to share this as well as some of our directors. I've shared this with you as well. Dr. Stevens, the principals, our teachers, families, and of course, our students have worked extremely hard. And the data with NWEA has definitely shown the efforts are in fact working. You'll see here for reading our growth comparisons from um, the fall to winter. If you look at the increase or decrease, you'll see that it's green across the whole bottom of that row in the chart because there were no decreases in the growth for students. So the percent of students that exceeded um, or met or exceeded the projected uh, RIT, so fall of 21-22, we were at 11% for first grade, we're now at 63%, so an increase of 52%. Same thing with second grade, 42% of our students in second grade, now 64. Um, and you can go all the way across and look at those percentile gains. Um, it's also important to note that the blue chart there on the bottom left-hand side shows you the um, increase of students, the percentage increase of students who met or exceeded the goals, and look at those, again, across all of them, there is not any decline. And then the chart to the far right on the bottom shows you the percentage, again, just to be visual, that same chart above is exactly what this is showing, but the visual of where those gains have really paid off from blue in the fall to red in the winter. Um, as you know, with this pandemic, the significant loss across the nation, the state, and uh, Portage was in math. And although we had to make certain that our gains were also taking place in reading, the math gains are also um, impressive. 
So here, again, you'll see all across the bottom for the increase, because there was not a decrease in the percent of students who met or exceeded the projected growth um, in math. So in first grade, again, in the fall, there was 22% of students, and now we're up to 60, which is an increase of 38%. And you can go all the way across um, through ninth grade. Now, please understand that we are not implying there's still not work to do, but gains are happening. Um, in the blue there on the left chart shows you again where those significant gains are. And then the fall to winter, again, that blue bar was the fall and the red shows you where those the percent of students are now with math. So um, again, it's a really a great tribute to the work being done in each and every single classroom. It's um, a tribute to the principals and the teacher leadership going on in each and every school, and it's a tribute to Dr. Stevens um, and the team with Linda, with Linda, who is providing the support personnel for our EL students and our title students, um, our special needs students with the help of Tracy Bauer, our director for special education, and our um, MTSS director, Stephanie Murray. I want to tell you that it's amazing when we look at the quadrant report, our students who are considered to have low achievement. It's amazing how, although low achievement, there was high growth um, between fall and winter. And ultimately, it was also pretty interesting to see that our high achieving students had high growth. So the growth across all levels of our students for various reasons is really a significant gain. And I would say, at least from what I've experienced in looking at our targeted growth and the, the actual growth that occurred, this is a year to be really proud of in a time that was very uncertain. Our teachers, our students, our families, again, everyone involved has really done a nice job. So, do you have any questions for me? Or? Congratulations to our principals on, on that work. It uh, certainly was something when your evaluation this year and the, as we set your goals for the year, we made number one, two, three, and 100 priority was student yeah. achievement. And uh, so thank you for sharing that through the system. And uh, that's the, those are exciting numbers to see, uh, especially after where we've just came from. So congratulations to everybody and keep up the good work. Thank you. Any other questions from the board or comments on that? I just also want to say congratulations to our building uh, administrators, leaders, teachers, support staff, parents, everyone who was working with children. And uh, we all knew that that was our number one concern when we had virtual learning is well, how far behind will they be and how will they catch up and we have proof now that they have. Um, my question I guess would be um, how are the families uh, being told about their progress reports. I'm sure they had their, their parent-teacher conferences. Mm -hmm. What was their reaction to the overall their children's growth? So the parent-teacher conferences are very early in the year, um, October-ish, uh, start in November. Um, during that time, there was a lot of trepidation because the newness of the expectations with some of our common assessments um, the way that students were performing on those early in the year and us staying that course and helping our students and families um, with that supported struggle. And it was a supported struggle for teachers as well, our instructional support staff, because it's just, it was a significant undertaking. Um, what I will tell you is in the current moment, all of the NWEA growth reports or student individual reports are being sent via email to parents. So the upload is still in process, and then that will be going out to all of the parents. Um, through that opportunity, we are going to um, allow an opportunity for parents to give us some additional feedback after they see those reports, and I'll be happy to share those. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Uh -huh. We have so our administrators. Would anybody like to add anything? You're welcome to come up to the podium. Please do. Um, we always Anybody? love to hear from you. I do have some highlights that I'd like to share. The uh, NWA measures two different uh, metri metrics, and one of those is achievement, and one of those is growth. And so 
Um, one is compared, the achievement is compared with students across the country that take that same test at the same time of the year in the same grade level. That's what the, the, the beauty of the rich score is, is that you can compare it across all grades. So it, it doesn't matter if you're a third grader, if you score at a certain level, it's the same across all those. So it's a very um, uh, useful tool in terms of comparing numbers and the like. Um, and so under the achievement group, um, I just want to recognize some of the classrooms that had our highest achievement at each grade level. Um, and this is K through five. At the middle school, it's harder to distinguish a certain classroom because they travel throughout the day. But K through five, we have some certain achievement levels that, that were very, uh, very good. Um, at kindergarten, uh, Ms. Jewell's class from Myers um, had spectacular results. And these are combining both mathematics and reading. Um, at first grade, Ms. Munt's class at Kyle was, uh, was very strong. At second grade, there were two that I couldn't decide uh, which were the best, but um, Ms. Peel and Ms. Evans, so Ms. Peel's at Aylesworth and Ms. Evans is at Kyle as well. Um, third grade, Ms. Matheson at Kyle. At fourth grade, um, and, and Mike can be proud of it, and your daughter can be proud of your mother, uh, Mrs. Sopko at, uh, at Sailor had, had spectacular results. And then, and yeah, go ahead, make sure you tell mom, please. Um, and then uh, at fifth grade, Ms. Zalesko at Aylesworth had uh, strong results. I also want to make special mention of South Haven because um, their school at, uh, so we measure across the, the country in terms of uh, the percentage. And uh, at, 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 at South Haven in particular, the all, almost all of their classes were at or above the national average. So that's, that's very good when you compare it with, with countrywide uh, corporations and groups. Um, and then under growth, as Dr. Allen has mentioned, um, we had spectacular results all the way across and I looked at um, grade levels at each building. And so um, I, I had sent this to our, to our principals, the top 10 and all of these courses or all of these groups that I'll mention are at at least the 99th percentile across the country in growth. Um, and so um, Central's first grade math was in, in that group. Chrisman's kindergarten reading was in that group. Kyle's first grade uh, reading was in that group. Chrisman's second grade math was in that group. South Haven's third grade math. Central's second grade reading. Central's fourth grade reading. Uh, South Haven's second grade reading and our very top scorer of the whole group, um, Sailor's second grade math, uh, was the, the finest of all of our groups in terms of, and that's measured um, against all, they, they do it a matrix, so you can compare those. Um, it's not, uh, the growth is, is, is at a, uh, a certain metric that, the, that uh, they then figure, so you can compare that. So those are all spectacular. And I also want to give just a, a special shout out to Aylesworth in that area uh, because all of their classes either met or exceeded the projected growth um, for their whole group of, of classrooms. So I, I just wanted to try, to try to look at a couple of the positives and share that with our groups. Um, and that also is a little bit of a challenge for the next time. So I want to recognize the, the growth but also give them a little bit of a all right, your class can be next, um, and, and we need to be recognized for those things. So appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Are you planning to visit those classrooms? Well, I, I have already <laughs> re reached out to the, to the teachers, but uh -huh. yes, well, we, we try to next, and actually Dr. Allen has and I are being in three or four different classrooms tomorrow yeah. talking oh. to uh, cool. different teachers that uh, we wanted to highlight, and they wanted to highlight some of their work, so we're, they're proud of themselves. Huh? Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations. <laughs> And please express to your buildings our gratitude and how proud we are of the work that everyone's doing. Okay, next we move on to uh, some board business now. Are there any adjustments to the agenda from the board? President Moletta, may yeah. I ask that you let them go? Oh, yeah, you may be dismissed. You don't need to stay through the rest of it. Go home to your well, families. We're talking about playground please. equipment. <laughs> That's yeah. true. You have to stick around a minute if you don't mind. <laughs> Thank you. Stay there, Nick. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, we'll move on to uh, board reports. Do we have any board reports? I do. I do. The um, January reports for the Portage Township Food Pantry. There were uh, monetary donations of over $8,000. There were individuals that were served, about 300, over 300. Uh, 188 families. Uh, just keep in mind that the distribution of uh, the items are on Thursdays from 10 until 12 o'clock noon, the first, second, and fourth. And as I reported in the past, that third Thursday will be distribution from four until six. And if there are any families that uh, need assistance, we ask that you please contact 762-1623. That's the Portage Township Trustee's Office. Mr. Clancy is here with us, and we thank you because of your leadership. We have so many families and all the volunteers that are in need of assistance, so thank you for that. The Education Foundation, uh, we met last week. The major saver fundraiser was a success, over $15,000 in profit. Uh, and the schools who participated will be receiving a check. And there are still cards available if anyone is interested. I know that they will be selling them during the um, basketball games. The 500 Club fundraiser has been finalized. And the foundation will be planning the event during the back to school time. Selling and also selling PTEF t-shirts. Uh, one more item, the Indiana Association of Public Education Foundation will be sponsoring a 5K run or walk for educators. They're going to be receiving a voucher for school supplies. I don't have the date for that yet, but I will make sure I'll share it with everyone. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Trustee Wilkie? Yes, I have an update on the parks. There's a few important dates coming up. Um, our adult softball registration opened on February 11th and that will stay open um, through March. Our spring adult volleyball and spring youth soccer registration will open on March 1st. We are in the process of hopefully finalizing some details on a baseball program. That information will be coming out soon. Our market on the square will begin on Friday, June 3rd and will continue every Friday through August 19th. Our cruise nights at Woodland Park will be every Tuesday from June 7th through the end of August. And our summer movies will continue this year every Friday evening um, after the market. And this summer is a Disney theme, so each week there will be a different Disney movie. And there will also be music lineups for the market for all of those weeks as well. That's it. Okay, thank you. Any other board reports? Not? We'll move on to our superintendent's consent agenda, uh, which contains our approval of the personnel report for February 15th and the facility use request report. Do we have a motion to approve the superintendent's consent agenda? I make a motion. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call roll, please. Trustee Vasquez. Yes. Trustee Maletta. Yes. Trustee Williams. Yes. Trustee Wilkie. Yes. Our board consent agenda, which has our meeting minutes of the special board meeting, a board of finance from January the 24th, minutes of our regular board meeting on January the 24th, minutes of the executive session of January 24th, and minutes of the policy committee meeting of February 2nd, and minutes of the building grounds and innovation committee meeting on February the 7th. Do we have a motion to approve the board's consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. We have the motion second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call roll, please. Trustee Maletta. Yes. Trustee Williams, yes. Trustee Wilkie. Yes. Trustee Vasquez. Yes. Okay, we do not have any old business. We'll move on to new business. New business. Uh, first item on the agenda is the public hearing on the superintendent's uh, contract. Uh, this uh, notice had been sent out um, on that. So with that, I will open our public hearing for the superintendent's contract um, at this time. Will entertain anyone here willing to speak for the superintendent's contract? Anyone here speak for? Anyone here to speak for? Is there anyone here to speak against the superintendent's contract? Anyone here to speak against? And one more time, anyone here to speak against? Hearing none, we'll close our public hearing. Thank you. Next, we have our discussion of the 2022-2023 school board meeting agenda. 
I would just ask that the board um, please look at the meeting dates that are proposed um, and if you could uh, let President Maletta or myself know of any conflicts so that we can adjust it and have it for the second meeting for your consideration for approval. Yeah, so just um, shoot me an email if you've got a date. Now obviously we're not gonna, we switch them around if, if all, but if it looks like something that um, a majority of this board or a couple people in the board can't attend for some reason, we can make those adjustments now and do that within the next week so that we have time to have it on the agenda for our next meeting. Uh, next, we have the approval of the contract with skill sets. Dr. Ellenes? So, um, professional development, as you know, is a priority throughout the district, and skill sets is an online cat excuse me, catalog of video courses for professional development within the IT community. We're looking to replace the IT Pro TV as there are much more opportunities for users. It is not uh, limited for users. The cost for the first year is $6,995, and they are giving us the additional two years free of charge. Very good. Do we have a motion to approve? I make a motion. Second. The motion, we have the second. Any discussion? Very none, call the roll, please. Trustee Williams, yes. Trustee Wilkie? Yes. Trustee Vasquez? Yes. Trustee Maletta? Yes. Okay, so if everyone's okay with that I'd like to go out of order a little bit because I know we have a uh, guest here that's patiently waiting I believe he has another meeting he has to attend so I'm going to move us down to item 8.09 our recommendation and approval of the South Haven playground equipment replacement so um, first and foremost I would like to um, commend South Haven Elementary our parent teacher organization um, our teachers worked in collaboration with the parents in that organization to raise funds, um, approximately $40,000, to develop a playground that is inclusive of students um, to include those who have disabilities. Um, the concept is one that we have in place down at Founder Square at Hannah's Hope with that generous donation um, from Hannah's Hope. And at this point in time, we are going to be um, putting in a play playground similar uh, but different with that same concept in mind at South Haven Elementary. When we were discussing this through our partnership committee, um, Trustee Clancy had an extreme um, interest in this particular project and what it will bring to the township and the South Haven community in general. So um, is there anything you want to mention about this? I Okay, okay. So I did ask him to come along. He has met um, one time with our parent teacher organization representatives. We've met at South Haven and we have another meeting because we had to postpone it. Um, and he, as our township trustee, is also willing to give funds towards this in a very generous amount. Um, and I also want to share with the board, I have not shared previously, a very generous amount is also being contributed by Alliance Architects. So um, it will be a great project for the community and for the students. Um, and I, I did ask Attorney Elwood to review um, the equipment replacement and the cooperative um, that you would be asked to approve this evening. Yeah, so with that, um, I always get concerned with the cooperative purchasing because we almost got burned in 2017 with the field turf. Uh, so we've got to make sure that they are bidding it. It's an excellent process uh, approved by our state legislature, and, and I encourage doing it whenever we can, but we just have to be careful to make sure that they bid it pursuant to Indiana competitive bidding statutes. And so Andy from Alliance has sent me a couple of emails today. I'm okay with approving it, subject to my review of the contract, if we could. Okay. So do we have a motion to approve um, subject to the review of that contract? With Attorney Elder. Make a motion. <clears throat> second. Make a motion, second. Any discussion? Uh, I just want to say, Andy, certainly thank you for Alliance Architects mm -hmm. for a donation. And uh, Trustee Clancy, you, as an elected official, truly understand what collaboration is, and you always come to the bat for the Portage Township Schools and the community. And uh, we really appreciate your generous donation and your involvement in this project. So thank you. Thank you. 
and any on other behalf, discussion? On yes. behalf of all the teachers and, and, the, and the little people, you know, they really need places to play. Uh, during the time when so many of them are home or, you know, just always on their electronics. And so it's, you know, at, when I visit uh, parks and I see the interaction of, of young people, I, it, it amazes me how children that don't even know each other and when they uh, get together on a playground, how they become instant friends and they help each other out. And it just warms our hearts to see that. So thank you on behalf of all the children. Appreciate it. I just would like to mention as well that the base bid is $497,740 for this project. Okay. Any other comments or discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Trustee Wilkie? Yes. Trustee Vasquez? Yes. Trustee Maletta? Yes. Trustee Williams? Yes. Okay, thank you. You don't have to stick around either, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thank, thank, See you. Know. thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Sure. <laughs> Okay, next we'll, we'll go back to item. Andy, thank you again. Thank you, Andy. Oh, we're glad to be a part of it. Thank you always for every, every oh, you're putting confidence in us. So we love working with the district. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we are, let's see, item 8.04, approval of the contract with the Marsha Brenner Associates. So Marsha Brenner Associates is the software company that develops various plugins for PowerSchool. Um, they're user-friendly and merge PowerSchool uh, for our employees and also allow our families to view the necessary information much easier. So this plugin assists with our attendance and the cost for the setup, the training, and the utilization is $8,585. And the one-time setup training and cost to renew is $2,520. Do you have a motion to approve the contract with Marsha Brenner Associates? I'll make a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call roll, please. Trustee Vasquez. Yes. Trustee Maletta. Yes. Trustee Williams. Yes. Trustee Wilkie. Yes. Next, we have our approval of the overnight field trip by Portage High School varsity wrestlers on February 17th through the 20th to Indianapolis, Indiana. So we had 10 wrestlers um, make it to semi-state. Two of those individuals will be headed to the state competition to compete. Um, of course, our entire wrestling team is going, and we wish those gentlemen the best of luck. Thank you. Do you have a motion to approve the overnight field trip? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call roll, please. Trustee Maletta. Yes. Trustee Williams. Yes. Trustee Wilkie. Yes. Trustee Vasquez. Yes. Next, we have the approval of the overnight field trip by the Portage High School Boys Swim Dive Team to Indianapolis on February 25th and 26th for the state championships. I just want to mention uh, when this field trip form was filled out, our coaches specifically mentioned the educational objectives of competition at the highest level, team building, and state recognition for PHS in the community. So this is, again, another great opportunity for our student athletes to compete, um, and we wish those gentlemen as well the best of luck. Do you have a motion to approve the overnight field trip for the Portage High School Boys Swim and Dive Team? I make a motion to approve the overnight field trip. Second. Do you have a motion and a second? Any discussion? Hearing none, call roll, please. Trustee Williams, yes. Trustee Wilkie? Yes. Trustee Vasquez? Yes. Trustee Maletta? Yes. Next, we have our approval to advertise for fuel bids for the 2022-2023. Maria Bravo, who is our assistant CFO, um, she has quoted policy 6320 as the purchasing agent. We must seek bids to purchase that exceed $150,000. Um, our current bid it is with Petroleum Traders Corporation um, for our fuel and it expires March 31st. So we are seeking approval to advertise for bids for the purchase of no lead gasoline and diesel fuel. And the contract terms for this bid will be April 1st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023. I reviewed these documents as well. Okay, thank you. Do you have a motion to approve to advertise for fuel bids? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second, any discussion? You call the roll please. Trustee Wilkie? Yes. Trustee Vasquez? Yes. Trustee Maletta? Yes. Trustee Williams? Yes. Next, we have our approval to bid for the Portage High School scoreboard and athletic lighting. So this would be, yes, the uh, scoreboard replacement out on the uh, football field, and it would also be for the athletic lighting 
on the football field and track as well as the tennis courts. Do you have a motion to approve the uh, bid for the Portage High School scoreboard and athletic lighting? Make a motion. Second. The motion second. Any discussion? Call roll, please. Trustee Vasquez. Yes. Trustee Miletta. Yes. Trustee Williams. Yes. Trustee uh, Trustee Wilkie. Yes. Okay, next we'll move on to our superintendent updates. Dr. Ellenis. I would like to thank the board for um, your commitment in the various committee meetings we've been having lately. I know that it is a significant commitment on your part to be a part of these um, committees, and they're obviously um, helping to make some determinations as we move forward, and I appreciate your time and your contributions. Um, I want to share with you that our alternative school grant application that was sent off earlier this fall. We did receive confirmation last week that it was approved. That was exciting news for us. Um, also, we are, as I was mentioning earlier, surveying families regarding a latchkey program for the fall to meet their needs um, based on the need to change our tiered system to add an additional tier for transportation. Um, our Fagley Middle School cheer coach and our Title I um, executive assistant, Alice Dawson. She and the team raised 454 pounds of canned food to donate to our food pantry. Um, they took this and really made a great effort uh, throughout the school and it was obviously a very huge success and will benefit a lot of our families. Kindergarten registration is currently open online and March 2nd is our kindergarten roundup. So students who will be five years old on or before August 1st um, are encouraged to get registration taken care of at this time and be a part of Kindergarten Roundup March 2nd at the home schools of those um, students. We also want to thank Mrs. Williams and her team as they provide a Bright Beginnings backpack to each of those students that have just some general things for students to be able to work on prior to entering kindergarten um, and it is a great opportunity for our students as well to meet the staff and also take their kindergarten readiness assessment so that we can identify where they have strengths and also some opportunities to grow um, during that time frame before starting school. We also have a couple tricks up our sleeve Dr. Stevens and I spoke about today that we're gonna use some ESSER funds for um, to help beef up some of those skills prior to the start of school. Um, I did share with the board, as you are aware, today started our masks optional for um, families, I want to thank you for your commitment to returning to masks optional once um, it was something that we could agree with the health department was an appropriate time to do. Um, the updated protocols have been sent to families and all employees and uh, we do still see a lot of mask wearing. Um, but students and staff alike are very respectful in whether it be electing to or not to mask, and we're continuing with all of our sanitation protocols. I wanna, again, thank Mr. Thank Mr. Mavrovich because he and his team continue to keep all of that PPE on hand, and um, the sanitation process is, is an ongoing collaborative effort of everyone. Uh, we had a middle school career fair last week at the high school um, that was really a, a great opportunity for our students. We combined with uh, Union Township Schools. There are various ones taking place throughout the county. Um, we hosted again for Portage and for Union Township. It was a great event and we appreciate the collaboration between the Career Center and our school personnel. I want to congratulate our very own Nick Gran, who is a finalist for the School Business Professional Award by IASBO. Um, he was nominated and there are three individuals who are up for the running um, and his peers throughout the region for Region 1 will be voting on that. Um, he is not someone who likes to brag. Um, he does not like personal recognition, but I know that this board appreciates him. Yes, we are quite <laughs> enjoying this. Um, we will have a reception at some point, and he will be the highlight of it. So he's already uh, struggling with any bit of recognition. Well, I just got to say, with Nick, and I've been here a while, and we've 
he works so well with this board. Uh, he explains things in terms that's easy for us to understand. Um, I mean, we appreciate your hard work, your honesty, and, and certainly your communication with this board. So good luck with that. And, Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're pulling for you. We think you're the best, yep. for sure. I think a unique um, advantage that we have with Nick being here is that he, he was a math teacher. So being mm -hmm. an educator and working with school finance, he really gets a lot of the various layers. And then, as you said, being able to break down those concepts with his teaching background in math has been really beneficial for me as well. I, I just like all the pie charts. <laughs> Start working on a speech. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, Sarah Quinones, who is in our business office, um, she just completed the IASBO Business Office Specialist Certification Program. This is a completely voluntary program, but it is very rigorous. Um, she has completed hers, and Maria Bravo, our assistant director, is in the process and will be uh, finished here soon. Um, I know that Mr. Mavrovich has completed some of those certification programs as well in the past. And again, although voluntary, they are very rigorous and we benefit greatly as a corporation for their desire to uh, build themselves professionally. So we are very grateful for their efforts. That's all I have. Great, thank you. Uh, are there any items not on the agenda from the board? Um, I do have one, I just wanna, wanna share um, as like many of us do on this board, attend a lot of the athletic events. And I just want to talk about what happened Friday night uh, at Portage High School. It was, it was just an amazing night. And, and kudos to staff, the kids, everyone there. So the high school basketball team was playing the number one team in the state, Chesterton, uh, who's a longtime rival, of course. Um, but, you know, from watching the cheerleaders, performances, the dance team, which is just so much better. I mean, every year it just gets bigger and better and better. Um, the pet band, which we've always been known for having a great atmosphere with our big red basketball band, um, their performance. Um, now we have a drum line, which was just incredible to watch the performance of the drum line at halftime. Um, the student athletes, you know, going up against the number one team, we were that close to pulling off the major upset and most of that game was there were three freshmen and a junior on the basketball court almost that entire game I mean to think about that that future so those the new coaching staff and what they're doing with those kids is phenomenal uh, but the biggest thing that I took away from that night and again that the gym was just absolutely electric from start to finish full house um, was our student section probably the biggest that I've seen I don't know if I've ever seen that many kids together they were polite, respectful, supportive. Um, and I think about the people that were there to watch Portage the fans and some who maybe never were there before because you've got parents now coming because their kids were playing in the basketball band, which was packed. They had a full house in, in the drum line to be able to see that in the pride. But I think about those visitors that were there and there were a lot of Chesterton fans there on the other side. They had to, the impression they had to walk away with watching our kids from all those facets on how they behaved and how they acted and the excitement and what we did. I was just, I had goosebumps. I was just so proud of it. And, um, you know, uh, my son Anthony was just happened to came home for the weekend, uh, went to the game, and he was just on his feet, you know, two years removed from being in the high school, still there. And um, a lot of former students were there. But he even walked away and said, that was the most exciting high school basketball game I've ever been to. I mean, in that atmosphere. So congratulations to Mr. Stills, if you would pass that on. Yes. And to the coaching staff of all those various groups and, and to the kids. Um, it's something for all of us as a board to be really proud of what I saw either at, at the high school. So please pass that Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else from the board? I don't believe we received any. Did public not. comments. Did so, not. 